In these two videos, we've explored the pros and cons of dome, ring and ribbon tweeters, along with their directivity patterns and frequency responses. Akabaga is a powerful piece of software that provides valuable information about driver directivity, and this information is quite close to reality. Hi, and welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll simulate ribbon, dome, and ring tweeters. To simulate a dome tweeter, follow these steps. First, set the dome's direction along the z-axis. We're going to create a spherical dome with a radius of 1.5 centimeters. Using a smaller mesh size results in a more precise dome shape. It divides the dome into many triangles. The more triangles, the smoother and more accurate the shape. After selecting Driven in this menu, the dome will act as a sound source. Now we need to place the dome on a speaker box. Create a baffle facing the Z direction, like this. Set a depth for it and close off the rear side. We need to make a hole in the baffle to mount the driver. Here's how you can do that. For the box, I'm selecting a mesh size of 4 cm. Remember, the lower the value, the more precise the results, but it also increases calculation time. If you have a powerful PC, you can try lower values for better accuracy. Since we're not modeling a specific real-world driver, check this box. The XY symmetry setting tells the simulator to model only one quarter of the geometry, then mirror it to calculate the full shape. This speeds up calculations and works well for perfectly symmetrical designs. Define a frequency range for the tweeter like this. To generate the directivity plot, we need to add a radiation polar unit. Because the baffle is facing the z-axis and its width lies along the x-axis, we should select z-x as the radiation plane. These green indicators confirm that everything is set up correctly. As you can see, this dome tweeter shows a wide dispersion pattern. By choosing a smaller mesh size for the box, this part will look just as clear as the earlier section. In its simplest form, a ribbon tweeter can be modeled as a flat rectangular surface with an area equal to that of the dome tweeter. As shown, the directivity plot is slightly narrower than the domes. However, because the ribbon is taller than it is wide, we should examine its vertical directivity as well. The result reveals a noticeably narrower vertical dispersion pattern which is expected for a ribbon tweeter. Now let's try modeling a ring-shaped sound source as a representation of ring radiators.
The results show a directivity pattern that's even narrower than that of the dome tweeter. Since the ring radiator has a perfectly symmetrical shape, its vertical and horizontal directivity plots are nearly identical. Thanks for watching.